Amir recalls an event that happened 26 years before, when he was still a boy in Afghanistan, and says that that made him who he is. Before the event, he lives in a nice home in Kabul, Afghanistan, with Baba, his father. They have two servants, Ali and his son, Hassan, who are Hazaras, an ethnic minority. Baba's close friend, Rahim Khan, is also around often. When Afghanistan's king is overthrown, things begin to change. One day, Amir and Hassan are playing when they run into three boys, Asef, Wali, and Kamal. Asef threatens to beat up Amir for hanging around with a Hazara, but Hassan uses his slingshot to stop Asef. The story skips to winter, when the kite fighting tournament occurs. Boys cover their kite strings in glass and battle to see who can sever the string of the opposing kite. When a kite loses, boys chase and retrieve it, called kite running. When Amir wins the tournament, Hassan sets off to run the losing kite. Amir looks for him and finds Hassan trapped at the end of an alley, pinned with his pants down. Wali and Kamal hold him, and Asef rapes him. Amir runs away, and when Hassan appears with the kite, Amir pretends he doesn't know what happened. Afterward, Amir and Hassan drift apart. Amir, who is racked by guilt, decides either he or Hassan must leave. He stuffs money in a watch under Hassan's pillow and tells Baba that Hassan stole it. When Baba confronts them, Hassan admits to it, though he didn't do it. Shortly after, Ali and Hassan move away. Study guide. Red, white, and royal blue. The story jumps to March 1981. Baba and Amir are in the back of a truck as they escape from Kabul, which was invaded by the Soviets and has become a war zone. After a hellish journey, they make it to Pakistan. Two years later, Baba and Amir live in Fremont, California. While Baba works at a gas station, Amir finishes high school and goes to college. Baba and Amir sell things at a flea market on Sundays, and Baba sees an old friend, General Tahari. Amir notices General Tahari's daughter, Suraya. When Amir finally speaks to her, General Tahari catches him and tells him there is a proper way to do things. Not long after, Baba is diagnosed with lung cancer. Amir asks Baba if he will get General Tahari's consent for Amir to marry Suraya. General Tahari accepts the proposal. They hold the wedding quickly because of Baba's health, and Baba dies a month later. Amir and Suraya try unsuccessfully to have a baby while Amir works on his writing career. Amir gets a call from Rahim Khan. Rahim Khan is sick and wants Amir to see him in Pakistan. Amir meets him a week later, and Rahim Khan tells Amir about the devastation in Kabul. He says things only got worse after the Soviets were forced out. Now the Taliban rule by violence. He has a favor to ask of Amir, but first he needs to tell him about Hassan. When Baba and Amir left Afghanistan, Rahim Khan watched their house. Out of loneliness and because he was getting older, he decided to find Hassan. He convinced Hassan and Hassan's wife, Farzana, to come back to Kabul with him. Farzana and Hassan eventually had a little boy, Sorab. A few years later Rahim Khan went to Pakistan for medical treatment, but he received a call from a neighbor in Kabul. The Taliban went to Baba's house and shot Hassan and Farzana and sent Sorab to an orphanage. Rahim Khan wants Amir to go to Kabul and bring Sorab back to Pakistan, where a couple lives that will take care of him. He tells Amir that Baba was Hassan's father, and Amir agrees to do it. In Afghanistan, Amir finds the orphanage where Sorab is supposed to be, but he is not there. The orphanage director says a Taliban official took Sorab a month earlier. If Amir wants to find the official, he will be at the soccer stadium during the game the next day. Amir goes to the game, and at halftime, the Taliban put a man and a woman in holes in the ground and the official Amir is looking for stones them to death. Through one of the Taliban guards, Amir sets up a meeting with the official. When they meet, Amir tells the official he is looking for a boy, Sorab, and the official tells the guards to bring the boy in. Sorab is wearing a blue silk outfit and mascara, making him appear more feminine and suggesting that the men sexually abuse him. The official says something Amir recognizes, and suddenly Amir realizes the official is Asef. Asef says he wants to settle some unfinished business. He beats Amir with brass knuckles, breaking Amir's ribs and splitting his lip. Sorab threatens Asef with his slingshot, and when Asef lunges at him, Sorab shoots him in the eye, allowing Amir and Sorab to escape. As Amir recovers in the hospital, he finds out there never was a couple that could care for Sorab. Amir asks Sorab to live with him in the U.S., and Sorab accepts. The adoption officials tell Amir that adopting Sorab will be impossible since he can't prove Sorab's parents are dead, and Amir tells Sorab he may have to go back to an orphanage. 
Amir and Soraya figure out a way to get Sorab to the US, but before they can tell Sorab, Sorab tries to kill himself. He lives, but he stops speaking entirely. Even after they bring Sorab to California, Sorab remains withdrawn. One day, they go to a park with other Afghans. People are flying kites. Amir buys one and gets Sorab to fly it with him. They spot another kite and battle it. Using one of Hassan's favorite tricks, they win. Sorab smiles, and as the losing kite flies loose, Amir sets off to run it for Sorab. Allowing Hassan's rape, Amir fails Hassan profoundly and fundamentally. Even worse, Amir never corrects his failure for the rest of Hassan's life. Amir views Baba as just, strong, and sure, and finds himself lacking in comparison. Baba seems to share this perception of his son, but Amir ultimately learns that Baba too has deeply betrayed Ali in sleeping with his wife, and that much of what Amir perceived as Baba's strength was Baba trying to atone for his failings. The inciting incident that sets the plot in motion is Asef's raping of Hassan after Hassan recovers the defeated kite of Amir's victorious kite fight. Though this specific event sparks all the important plot developments to come, it is not the beginning of Amir's betrayal of Hassan. The reader knows that Amir tends to be petty and disrespectful toward Hassan, sometimes even lying to Hassan to keep him illiterate and on the periphery of Baba's favor. Amir regrets his treatment, but for him, the power struggle has always been a familiar hallmark of their relationship. Amir betrays Hassan again by growing distant after the rape, and eventually by framing Hassan for stealing his watch and birthday money. These betrayals prove unendurable for Hassan and Ali, who leave Baba's household and never return. Throughout the next quarter century of Amir's life, not even his escape from war-torn Afghanistan into his new American life can fully keep the haunting of his past at bay. When Baba offhandedly mentions Hassan's name, Amir says, a pair of steel hands closed around my windpipe, indicating that there is still much that must be atoned for. Full text. Great expectations. The climax of the novel and resolution of Amir's inner turmoil comes when Asef brutally beats Amir for attempting to rescue Sorab. Asef's brass knuckle punching is literally the beating that Amir was unwilling to take decades earlier to defend Hassan. Hosseini leaves no ambiguity about the importance of this moment as Amir laughs uncontrollably throughout the fight, due to how good it feels to be healed at last. Though this atoning fight is the climax of the plot, it is not the end of the story, because it only reflects half of Amir's betrayal of Hassan. Amir knows he must atone for his failure to support Hassan after the rape, which is why he fights to bring Sorab home to America. At no point does Hosseini guarantee that Amir's difficulties are over or that Sorab will fully heal, but by the end of the kite runner, as Amir carefreely runs after a kite, with a smile as wide as the valley of Panshir, there is a clear sense that Amir is moving forward with responsibility and compassion, and there is reason to hope for these characters' futures. Welcome to this video summary of The Kite Runner, audiobook by Khaled Hosseini. Published in 2003, The Kite Runner, has become a modern classic, exploring themes of guilt, redemption, and the power of friendship.